Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne, and in today's video, we're gonna do a landscape using only three primary colors. We're gonna use the cobalt blue, cad yellow light, and cadmium red light. And we're gonna also use ivory um, black and, a, and titanium white to do our toning. So this is one of the best ways to make a cohesive painting is to use a limited palette. And in this video, I'm gonna take you step by step and show you how to do all the color mixing to create a complete palette just to do this little landscape. So there we go. Uh, I do wanna say a shout out and a thank you to some of my members that have joined me here and, and are now members on my channel, um, Barbara, Paige, we're glad you're here. Barbara, thank you for joining us. We have Mel Scott Scott, and I like that name. That's very cool. Uh, Laura Levine, we've got Allison Silva, and Joy Lynn Persley. So thank you so much for being here and becoming a member. Your support really does matter to me. It really, really does. You have no idea. So thank you so much for being there. And if you are watching this channel and you think maybe, perhaps, maybe you'd like to become a member, you'll see a little join button down below. And it's, uh, the join button is like, it's like right here. See the little join button? It's kind of sitting down there. Go ahead and hit the join button and then you can be a member as well and I'll give you a shout out. And if you're not a, subs a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe too. That's easy. That's easy. And uh, we'll go ahead and have some fun there too. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this little landscape. All right, folks, I am going to attempt to do a landscape using only these colors. Now I have titanium white, cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, and cadmium red light. And I have ivory black. Now, if I'm really wanting to do this challenge, I would only use these colors, but I'm gonna keep the black on hand in case I need it. So what I'm gonna do before we get into, since I'm wanting to do this landscape, I want to make some greens. So we know that if we take yellow and blue, we can make green, right? So we're gonna mix cobalt blue, cad yellow, and just make, you know, a starter green. This is the green we're starting with, folks. This kind of looks very weird. Doesn't look like a very real looking green, but we've got this green. Now I wanna have some cooler greens, so I'm gonna take some more of the blue and add it up here. Just have some really dark, cool green up here. Now for me, I like to have little browns in my greens. So if I add a little um, cad red, it will brown it up a little bit. And of course, cadmium is, I mean, I should say red is green's complement. So mixing complements is a great, I like mixing complements. I am a, so to me, this makes a more earthy green. So you can see it's starting to brown up a little bit. So I'm going, I'm going with this middle green, this initial green that we made and adding the cad red to it. And it does earthy it up a little bit. I'm gonna put even more in there. I like it really earthy. There we go, that's kind of an interesting green. Don't you think it's a brownish green? If I got it too, I'll just add a little bit more green to it. I think you get the idea got this kind of green here. And so I'll call this my mid green. It's very earthy. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make some more green again. I'm gonna go ahead and take some more cobalt blue, cad yellow, mixing it up here a little bit more, a little bit more cad yellow. A little bit more cad yellow. starting with that color again. Now I might want one that's, I've got to have a, maybe a little bit of a warmer color. I've got kind of a, a cooler, more of a neutral color. Let's start heating it up here. I'm gonna do it off to the side like this. Now, another thing that I could have done was take a little bit of the CAD 
yellow and cad red and made an orange color. And by taking a little bit of an orange, I will have to confess, this cad yellow is actually a cad yellow hue. So it's not actually gonna behave exactly like a true cad, I don't think, but um, I'm just, this is really for demonstration purposes and I want it to be pretty true. So I have this color here. And sometimes I like to mix a little bit of oranges into my greens as well. And so it's a little bit different. Now I've got a big array of colors here, but it's all the same, basically the same value. So I can actually take this cool color. I may go ahead and make a tint and uh, lighten it up with a little bit of uh, white. And if I think it's too, I don't know, earthy, I'm gonna put a little bit of my orange in there. I mean, to make it a little bit more earthy. So you can get an array of colors just with a few. And okay, so there's a cool light, a cool green lighter value. And now let's do the same thing down here with a lighter value green with uh, titanium white. So I'm just gonna have a lot of weird colors all over my palette here. And again, I sometimes feel like a little bit of orange goes a long way, just a little bit. I do like an earthier color and you can see how much earthier this looks. I, I'll mix several different colors just to get that look. Now, I could, and you know, I could say I want to try to avoid using the ivory black, but if I made a gray up here using ivory black and titanium white, I've got this gray. I can actually have different tones. So I can mix this tone over here, grab a little bit of this color and make a tone. Um, grab a little bit more of that gray. That's a kind of a neat tone. Okay. So you can go you can go in any direction. Now there's a pretty neat array of greens. And if I needed to go with more shading, if I really needed an intense or cooler color, I could take a, a shade here and you know to make a shade of that cool blue that I had um, and just have a darker version of it. And that's basically what I did. Um, and then again, you can make a shade of any one of these colors. Now, if I'm, I'm thinking I need a sky color, and I have this gray that I just mixed, I am going to keep my background sky pretty light. And I'm gonna start with this titanium white. And I know this palette's gonna be one big hot mess, but um, I'm gonna take some of this gray just a tiny bit of the blue and just make this very nice sky gray okay. now I'm not even sure what else I'm gonna bump into here but this is a great basic way of mixing mixing colors with a limited palette and I basically just started with titanium white cobalt blue and ca um, cadmium yellow and cadmium red light. And you can see all this mixture of colors that we have just from using those few colors. Let's see what else we can get into. And I'll be mixing along the way. But this is a basic, <laughs> um, just a really basic palette. But sometimes, especially, I will say almost all the time, the more limited your palette it is, the more cohesive things tend to be because you're pulling all the same colors into the palette. So it makes a cohesive look. So using a limited palette really can be quite helpful. And for beginner painters, I think really all painters, it's a great exercise in reminding yourself the basics of color theory and mix mixing oil paints.
So I'm starting with, this happens to be an eight by 10. It's a, just a, a wood paneled. It's, you can see it's, it's a pretty deep canvas. And I just put a, uh, or substrate, it's actually a wood panel. So I just put a very quick uh, coat of just acrylic on it. Um, it's got quite a bit of tooth. I just put the acrylic down so it doesn't completely suck up all the, the paint. And what I'm gonna do, this is just gonna be a basic demonstration of how to do a landscape, being very basic with basic colors. And you saw me just mix a palette using just cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, and cad red light, and white and uh, titanium white and ivory black. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of sketch out a landscape and it almost doesn't matter what I'm doing I I'm just gonna take a little bit of green and suggest I've got some you know you know some type of trees um, over in this area and I can make all kinds of what I call little windows later and just this mass here of of trees and maybe just like a just like a little country road you know and what what it doesn't it really almost doesn't matter um, what my um, composition is. I just want it to be pleasing. It's something I see around here a million times. Um, you know, just a, a little field and, and I'm just kind of, I've got several photo references that I, um, you know, might have considered for this piece, but none of them were exactly what I was looking for. I wanted something that was gonna be a, good for a demonstration purpose and I couldn't really find anything so I'm just kind of making it up so I'm gonna call, have some kind of massive trees over here in this area and uh, some trees or something and I may even have my little road um, you know, it's going up the um, you, know, you know I just kind of playing with it I'll, I'll see I may change this up a little bit maybe another tree um, in this back maybe a back field um, I may be getting this too busy who knows um, um, because I want to be able to demonstrate how you can light, if you lighten your values in the background, you can create a lot more depth in your pieces. And um, so let's just kind of go, I mean, you know, there could be a house or some kind of something over here, I don't know. So being that I, my brain requires that I work from the background to the foreground because it just, it just works that way for me. I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to grab another brush and mix a, um, you know, you saw how I made this sky color earlier. I just took um, titanium white and mixed a little gray and a little bit, bit of cobalt blue. I'm gonna start with that as my background color. You know, it looks basically white and I'll, I'll change it up a little bit as I move through it. I probably should have a heavier brush. This is too soft. This is too soft a brush, folks. I'm gonna go in with a heavier brush. I'm gonna actually work with a, uh, this happens to be a number six Ivory Long Filbert. Um, I, I need a little bit more coarseness for the substrate. Yeah, that's better. And I am not really, I'm just kind of popping this in here. And, and normally um, on my pieces that are on this kind of substrate, I will put um, paint on the sides, but for today, I'll save that for another day maybe using a little bit of oil. Um, just getting that in here. Now, just because I did this doesn't mean I have to stick with this color. And actually, I probably should paint the tops and stuff because it'd be hard to remix my colors later. And I want to bring it down past the horizon line or what I've de deemed the horizon line because Let's face it, folks, I don't know where this painting's going. I'm just making it up. And sometimes it's okay. You know, I like to, I like to do that. Um, like I said, I, I was inspired by several different uh, paint, you know, photo references, but none of them quite were doing it for me. And I'm just kinda, and I don't know that I want this, this looks almost too white. And I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of uh, the, uh, Add yellow to this because I think it'll warm up the sky and make it a little bit more interesting and yeah that looks prettier. Let me see if I can back this out a little bit. So you can... 
because I like to work uh, from the background to the foreground, I know this at first doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't know where it's going, because I'm not really even sure I do, but I have an image in my mind. And of course, it could be something I've seen a million times here in East Tennessee, but it's probably something you've seen too. And then, uh, so I'm just kind of popping that in there. Like I said, I like the little bit of the warmth that that yellow adds to this. And, you know, usually there is a kind of an interesting, you know, closer to the horizon line in almost any portrait, it will be lighter in value depending on the time of the day, but it's a good rule of thumb. And, uh, God, that looks pretty good. And I might put just a tiny bit of cobalt up here in the corner. Pulling this down just a little bit. Putting that little bit of cobalt off to the side, mixing it into that grayish white that I had mixed earlier. Just keeping things a little bit interesting here in the sky. It's okay if I add a little bit more because I like it really interesting. And that's kind of fun to be able to do pieces like this. I mean, I have just got done doing a, a double portrait and, and I keep you guys pretty up to date on what's going on uh, here in the studio. And um, I've got one that I'm starting of a uh, little black pug, but I know I'm gonna be working on it for a long time. So I have to do doing something so you guys have something to see on Wednesday. See how that works? It's really hot here in Kingsport, and um, my dog and I went for a walk, and oh my goodness. Even he, it took him a longer time to recover. He's a young dog. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be getting out that. Okay, I'm happy with that. I just like to um, make that a little bit interesting like that. Um, and then after you use a harsh brush like this, you know, a harder brush, if you need to blend a little bit more, using a softer brush like this long filbert this is number four four eclipse long filbert i'm just dipping in a little bit of oil and just seeing if there's any i want it to be somewhat seamless i'm not really looking for a dramatic sky um i'm gonna even grab a little bit of that yellow again and put it here the horizon line and i'm thinking i'm pretty sure the trees are going to be um into this area but you know I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Um, and I'm going in with a soft one. This is a number two Eclipse Long Filbert. Um, not very big. And I'm gonna make a, I want things to look far away. So you saw how I mixed um, these greens. I like this um, very earthy green over here, but I need to lighten up the value. So I am going to mix a little bit of titanium white in this. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of the cobalt because I need to cool it down just a tad. And a little bit of the orange, believe it or not. And um, I like, I'm browning it down just a tad. And I'm gonna go back in here and suggest that there's brush. Now I am using my brush as my knife, which I shouldn't be doing. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to just make it very soft in the background. Push up on this a little bit. Leave some little holes if you need to. It's, it just makes it look like it's, um, 
and I'm not even sure if this is gonna be right, but. into that paint like that. I don't need a lot of paint on the brush. I just need to push up. Pushing up does, um, it somewhat blends it into that sky. I, I have to continue on to the side since I started this. starting. I'm going to try to do this a la prima. So let's see. I need to have a little bit more blue in that, I think. A tiny bit more black. The baseline. But I still want to keep the values very light because remember it's in the background. I'm wiping the brush off a little bit. I don't want to add a lot of paint. Yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm not pecking it. The brush is almost not even leaving the, uh, the uh, surface that I'm painting. I'm just kind of moving it around. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. All right. And I'm going to have a darker, kind of more um, dramatic looking tree in this uh this area here so you know the the dark color that we made here I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in it a little tiny bit of black I was wrong I have to use black I, I am a I do like my black and I'm using a flat right now this is number two evergreen long flat and it may seem strange that I'm using a flat but I I never was a flat person until recently, I just started liking flats. Um, sometimes it's my students that sort of uh, influence me, right? You never think. <laughs> I'm as, as influenced by my students as I, hopefully they are by me. I hope that I've... <laughs> now see, you can see it's obviously a darker value. It's very cool, it's still in the background. And so, if I need to add more blue, I add more blue. I gotta keep it cool. Keeping it cool, folks, keeping it cool. Yeah, that's good. And I, I need that, that definite contrast between these. And I'm using the side of the flat to create that. I like the little tree holes, if you will. But it's better to have very, you know, solid, you know, I'd rather just go bam, 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 bam and create these shapes than to have a bunch of um, pecky, pecky shapes. Because I may go into this and actually um, make it even stronger. I'm not sure yet, maybe add some greens to it, but I'm getting my basic shapes when I'm first starting out a piece. I'm gonna add, since it's really kind of like hitting the light, I'm adding a little bit, just a little bit of the greens to it. I know that this is on the outside. It seems like I've created this light source with this yellow, and I'm just kind of, eh, that's probably too much. Just kind of playing with it. Now, understanding light and putting it in appropriate, appropriately, um, it's really study when you're outside looking at trees and how things kind of play off, off of each other. And I'm going to suggest it goes down. I'll just go strong, go strong. Adding a little bit of hybrid black to this again. Down here, yeah, go strong. 
because I know I had suggested trees. I can always move things around. I can always add more um, windows, or I call them windows, but the little holes, light holes in the trees later. I'm just trying to get, still, uh, I'm in the very basic beginning stage of this painting, so I can't get too crazy here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna try to hit a little bit of grays in here, since I've got this in. Just mix a little bit of grays in here. Just remember, it is in the distance, and I don't want to get too um, crazy and dark up front right away. But I knew that I had to make my value stronger than what was behind it. So, so you, knowing, you know, using your gray. So I'm mixing some more gray into it. And I can go into this and really do some more. And I'm using the very edge of my uh, brush. So if there was light coming in through this tree, there would be light around this area. So you know you have to leave it a little bit um, light on those sides because that's where the, you remember there's light coming from behind the tree. So. I'm gonna suggest that there's like a hill or something because I don't like this too slopey and I'm, I'm gonna kind of counter slope it here and I may be bringing my sky down a little bit. Um, maybe not, maybe if I, maybe if I suggest it's here. Um, I'm not sure what it's gonna be. I didn't like this slope. Um, I'm gonna go similar to the color I started with over here on this side, which is a very gray green. I'm just gonna, um, pop this in here. Again, I'm keeping the value lighter than this value, lighter than the tree that's next to it. Because if, you know, if it's in the distance, it's going to look lighter. And because it is a mountain or whatever it is back here, a hill, I want a soft edge. I don't want it to be really, so I'm cleaning my brush off a little bit, just adding a little bit of oil. So where this yellow sky color and this tree are hitting, I'm just kind of I don't want it to, I need it to be softer. So when you want soft, I got my sable out. So I just picked up a little um, filbert red dot. It's like a sable, it's very similar to a sable. And I'm just, just barely letting that have the definition. I just want it to be soft. That's the thing. Just soften that up. Okay. But still, the values are lighter. Behind the stronger values, you're going to, you tend to have like that. Just pop that in there like that. Okay. Now, uh, I'm struggling here. Now, I might want to use green for the, for the ground, but I, I may want to use you know, here in East Tennessee, it's really hot right now, and our, our grass is getting burned up. <laughs> it's absolutely getting burned up. I may go a different direction with my grass, so stay tuned. All right, so we made some yellows, or some dead grass colors. So I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna get a feel of where things are going, and I'm just kinda, and this, and a lot of this may change. I may move a lot of this around. Um, and I'm just going to bring it up that's probably a little too, I'm gonna to go in with that neat, yeah, that's probably better. That was the, uh, kind of the caramelly, almost a yellow ochre, but you watched me mix it. And again, this is a very dry wooden panel. 
you can almost you can hear it. And I'm I'm using the uh, number four Eclipse Long Filbert. I probably should be using a harsher, um, you know, maybe like the ivory would be better. But eh, you know, we're just going with it. This is the one I picked up. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil just to make it roll a little bit smoother. And I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit. Just model my grass a little bit. And... You know, there's gonna be trees. Remember too, I'm always, I'm oftentimes just all about contrast. So uh, having the contrast in my work is important. I gotta use a bigger brush, folks. This is driving me nuts. So I'm grabbing my um, the number six ivory long filbert, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do my coverage on my sides because this is very likely. If it doesn't sell, if one of you guys doesn't buy it, it's probably going to North Carolina. Because the nice thing about North Carolina and East Tennessee, we have very similar landscapes and terrains. So this could easily have been seen in North Carolina. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm trying to feel out. I just, you know, I said I might put a little building. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do here yet. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of, you know how fields of grass, they have like furrows and darker areas, I am actually going to take some of this brown, I mean this uh, orange, and because I'm going to add some green to it to make it kind of browner. And we've got a lots of greens because you watched me mix those. And I'm going to just suggest that there's areas of, you know, I could even Using the flat. And if it's too, if my orange is too orange, I'm adding a little bit of blue to it. The cobalt blue to that orange will bring it down and make almost a neat brown. And I'm putting a little bit of that in there. Well, it didn't really do it as much as I thought it would. I'm going back to the concept of just having dry grass. This is just nasty old dry grass. And then I'll put some of the greens in it just to make it <laughs> like there's no, that's too. I need it to be bluer. Bluer gray, that's too much. It's still coming out really. It's funny, it looks different on my palette than it's coming across in this. So remember, if you're gonna have like, when things are far away, they get closer together. So if you have like little furrows and they're gonna get skinnier and um, and closer together, does that make sense? So if I have lots of these, they might be fatter. A little bit. Um, so I'm actually adding a little bit of uh, brown and I'm gonna use my brush sorry that's uh, probably blocking you and I can always revisit this I I don't because I gotta get back in here and we'll see where we're going here so I can just form some little trees and I'm gonna go in the back I I don't know yet what I'm doing so now I'm coming forward a little bit more and so I'm gonna before I get into that I'm gonna add some more grays to this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I still think I got my value a little too dark. And it is in the, it is darker, but it's still off in the distance. And I don't want it to be too intense yet. So 
I'm graying it down a little bit. And that's the beautiful thing. I can adjust values by adding some grays if I need to. sense, I think. That's better. Okay. Okay, so trees. There's more trees. I want to make more trees and just, um, Again, I'm gonna go back in with the dark that I started with, the dark green that we made, and create some hump to humps back here. And they may look kind of weird at first. I may change, um, oopsie. I probably have this way too big. We'll just go with it. And I'm going to warm some of this up because remember our light seems to be coming from this area. So I'm just going to go in there with a little bit of a lighter green or warmer green, I should say. Like it's catching some of the light on that side. what I did there. I think I brought this tree is too massive so I'm gonna scrape some of this tree off. Yeah, so I'm scraping some of that off and then gonna suggest that some of these trees are gonna be up here, that there's gonna be some lighter values on the top of the tree. So I can actually carve out my trees with this paint scraper. Um, I don't know what that's gonna be yet. So let's just take that out, because I, I need it to make sense to me. Um, I think I'll make some of the dead, dead grass up there is what I think I'm gonna do, to break it up a little tiny bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit yellower. Because um, I need it to be a little bit later, later value than this. Yeah. I'm gonna just make this go downhill. I used to have something to break it up. I don't know. Maybe there. I was gonna put some more trees, but you know, I just kind of did that rough sketch, but I don't really know what's going in here yet. So I'm just kind of playing. Oh, I'm gonna bring that down, because I can always change it. I just needed to break that up. I had too much of a mass. Okay, so I have these trees over here. I'm gonna lighten up some of the edges here. So I'm not really putting detail in, I'm just putting in shape and form here. So if it looks weird, it probably is. <laughs> How's that for an answer? Um, and I'll probably put some bushes and stuff in, in, in this area, um, kind of coming down. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Taking up that edges here, pushing it up. Um, add some more of this in here. Sometimes it's better just to think of things in shape. The rest of it kind of follows, I think. Some more trees. 
trees over here. get too much of this light value on top, on top of everything here. But it is going to be lighter, but you know, I have to keep reminding myself, I'm still in background. So knowing that I have to keep my values, if I need to add a little bit of gray to it, I am. So I'm just going to gray this down a little bit because I get a little carried away sometimes. And I want my value between this over here to be darker behind this. And so oftentimes I will fit my, um, my composition to my aesthetic as far as my need for contrast. And so I can go back and manipulate things so that it's the way I like it. Because you know, that's the thing about art, right? You've got to be happy with it. So I have this other tree again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that again, right behind it, make the other tree kind of stand out. Still has it very gray, but yet, it's at least it's making sense. And just because I have that light background back there, I'm gonna warm it up just a bit. And I'm putting the, and I want that to fade. I don't want that to be so stark, just like bam. So I'm putting a little bit of this warmer color on top. And then I'm cleaning my brush off, wiping, wiping, wiping. Softening that up. Because I do not want it to look like it's, um, it's gotta still look like it's off in the distance. Same over here. There, nice, okay, got that. Again, remember we're, we're working with stuff in the distance. Okay, moving through it. Again, I need to mix more of my um, dark color that I was using here, which is cobalt blue into my green. And then I used a little ivory black. Come on, I just did. Right. And just a little bit more blues in there, keeping the shapes of shapes of my trees. I'm going to put some more trees in here. Again, I'll probably have to uh, let's put another tree over here. Like you've got rows and rows of trees here. In that little flat and again I'm not really looking for this to um, um, how's the word what's the word I want to say um, we're not doing detail back here and I'm gonna go in with the, the, the lighter gray green that I made but it's a lighter value we're gonna do the tops of these trees here and again I'm just kind of suggesting that there's tops of trees I'm not really um, I'm not trying to make this a um, detailed piece. Because this is gonna be all a la prima. Remember, this is all about using a very limited palette and creating a piece and mixing all your greens just what you got here, which was cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, white, and ivory black. That's what, I'm, what I've used so far. And that's, I'm keeping it that way, folks. I, I do definitely want this to be super, super uh, simple. We're gonna leave that. And if I wanted to get nuts, I mean, I could make a little building or something, and I could. That would be kind of cute, um, I want to. I've got my little, where's my little, you know, flats are good for this. Now, like I used to, I hate flats. I just never was a big flat fan. And I thought the only time I like using flats is if I have to paint buildings or windows or so I could just go one little stroke and just do it. This is the perfect flat scenario. <laughs> so I'm actually taking a little bit of this and it's not really a nice color, but um, it's what I got. 
I am using um, a little bit of this violet that I made and titanium white. And I'm just going to make a little, just a little line. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and give it a little high point over on here. We'll lighten it up on that side. Maybe we'll just put that little, little light there and uh, give it a root, red roof. Well, since I've got the cad red, and we're gonna take a little cad red and an ivory black, we're just gonna make a rusty old looking uh, building top here. Again, this is why <laughs> these little um, flats are wonderful for this kind of thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and just suggest that it's a little darker under this side. Um, might be some stuff going on down here. I probably should have a smaller brush, but again, I'm not really wanting it to be that much about this. So if I just come in here and say, okay, there's like a window. Maybe it's an old milking barn or something. I, again, don't want it to be that much of a building. I got. I'm putting in there so I probably should have let's see if I can do it with this brush this is it's not very uh let's see if I can make almost like the front of the building oops that's too much but I'm just gonna try to make it look a little lighter on the front oh well um I'm just gonna grab some of that grass color just to leave some things to imagination, right? It looks like it's going into a little hill. I don't know, I want something in front of this. So this little, I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. Yeah, it's funny how you just kind of start moving stuff around. <laughs> so we'll see what, what happens here. I'm gonna add some more trees, I think. But I have to keep the values light. I just wanted to suggest a little building here. And again, I'm gonna go up on this. I'm using this uh, um, flat, which is really not ideal for this job, but it's doing a fine job. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about this whole building. <laughs> I don't know if I like it yet. I'm gonna try to make it. Cause I don't know that it makes sense to me, but. We'll try to make, I'm just gonna try to, got that too fat in there. There we go. I don't know. And I'm, you know, sometimes if I start really overthinking this, I'll say, well, where's my shadows? Where's my light? Where's my, yeah, I don't wanna do that. So if I had my light kind of falling into that area, um, I shouldn't be using this brush. Uh, let me grab, I'll just grab, um, a little bit of yellow, yellowy gray. I'm gonna put some more of this yellowy gray back in here because I feel like it's catching the, the light and I like how it's, I just wanna play with it. I just wanna play with the light. And I know I'm gonna have these trees with contrast. I mean, I, with a lot of contrast. So I'm kind of playing that up a little bit. All right, so that's, all right, that's kind of feeling better to me. Oh yeah, that's good. I don't know what else is gonna happen in here, but 
Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit better about this trees and even that little weird building. Um, I probably <laughs> should take some of this off here. This... There we go. So I'll sit there and worry about this. I don't need to. All right, I'm gonna go back and start adding a little bit of highlights into this area. Um, this is when I can actually take some just cat yellow and white. Just kind of hit little areas in here. I might have picked up some of the light. And again, I'm not really trying to make this about detail yet. Um, and I know if I have the contrast, I know it's going to be dark over here. So um, I am going to just go ahead and lighten this up while I'm at it. and I don't want this to be so weird here. I'm gonna add some more paint. So this looks like it's choppy. I need to soften that up. Going in with a little bit of the browns. That's pretty good. I just wanted to soften that up. Add some greens to this. I don't like how this looks. And I'm like really not happy with that. That's better. All right, I'm getting so caught up in something that's really not important. So this area, I want it to be intense. So. Said I drew I was kind of thinking that this is going to be like a road. This is going to be like a really warm, I don't know, back to the burnt up grass, but I want it darker in value. Almost like it's creates, it's the trees are going to be creating a shadow because we have our light sources coming from back in here. Um, hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Let me think for a minute. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. As I mentioned, the grass in here in East Tennessee is pretty much getting burnt up. So I just want to make this look like straw or hay or just like that dry summer grass. So if I'm wanting kind of a yellow, but the thing is, if you're working with yellows, you almost always have to have a violet with it. it again, back to complementary colors. So I'm going to first take a little cad red and cobalt blue and just kind of make a neat little violet up here. Uh, let's get a little bit more blue in there. I need a violet. The reason I need a violet is I don't want my yellows to be like, you know, cad. So I'm going to take, you know, with a lot of this, this gray color that I made with the titanium white, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of yellow. It's the cad yellow going in there. And boy, that's really intense. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the orange that we mixed earlier. A little bit more. Remember, you can always you can always put more in, but you can't take it out. So I may have a couple different colors here, because you know, I want it to look like just dried out grass. So I'm gonna probably mix some of the green into that. I'm gonna go ahead and, since it's right here, remember this is kind of an imagination picture. So I'm gonna spread into that area just a little bit. And because I need it to, I'm gonna put a little bit of the violet in here. And I'm mixing that off to the side. And that's a little too much. Let's add a little bit more of the yellow in that. makes a very interesting gray, which using compliments often does. 
but I'm trying to keep this palette super, super tame, super, super uh, simple. There's a lot of colors I could have gone with. I could have gone with yellow ochre. I could have gone with like burnt sienna, but again, I'm sticking with this original palette that I started with. And let's see how, I mean, I want a successful piece. I want it to be nice and I want it to be a learning experience for me and you both. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun to do these kind of exercises and, and see how far you can go with a very limited palette. So that's kind of an interesting color. I like that. That looks like dead grass. All right, so we've got an array of dead grass colors and you saw me mix them. So I, I kind of was going in a different direction and, um, and you know what, while I'm at it, I have my cobalt, I mean, yeah, cobalt blue. I'm cleaning off my palette knife. I do need to mix like a, like a road color. So if I, add this color here, I just want a little purple in that. All right, I had, a, I had some delays here, folks. Um, I'm going to just put in some some, value, some darker values here, and I'm gonna work on this tree in this area. So, I, because I have the, the leaves that are gonna be going out into the sky, I kinda don't need them to be, I'm gonna go with a smaller brush. Um, they've gotta be a little warmer. I'm gonna mix a little orange in here with this green. I'm, I'm going to pick up some of the light that's in here. So I'm just going to suggest that it's some branches. And there's probably quite a bit of. Sometimes it looks weird because I start in weird spots, but I just think I gotta gray this down a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit of the ivory black. I already have some white in it. Put that in there. A little bit more of that orange. Is it earthies it up? Earthies it up. I like that word. I think I just invented it. So I'm just going to use this. I'm using just the the, um, the little Shiraz Evergreen. I'm sorry, it's the Evergreen Long Flat. And. putting straight orange in some of these areas. And I know I have to work on the top of this, but I don't want to right now. So this is wet and I kind of need to take advantage of this. I'm not, um, I need to take advantage of the wet edges. And so I'm making some, um, shades by mixing this a little bit of black into these greens that I had because I need it to be darker and that's and I'm gonna just kind of go in very strong um, I can put um, some um, windows light windows into this tree later I want it to kind of be, it's gotta be strong. I probably need to use a different brush. I'm gonna put some blues in here too. Let's see some blue. And sometimes if you're already working into a wet surface, you can go ahead and just go straight blue into that and it, it translates. So basically I want this whole area, and I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more. I'm going to go in with a larger brush, folks. And I'm going to take the color that we mixed here, the dark, dark blue, ivory black. Really go 
going strong. So I want my dark values pretty dark here. And like I said, I've got this whole edge of this canvas and this substrate. It's actually a wood panel. But I'll, I'll work it out later. Because there's going to be um, some, uh, a little bit of ivory, I'm sorry, a little bit of cad red in with this color because I'm, I'm wanting it to be almost a dark, a dark brown. So by mixing the cad red and ivory black, I kind of can create that color. Um, really put some greens in here too. Because this is really going to, it's going to be trees, right? <laughs> so I'm just putting in blocks of color. wanting it to look like trees. It doesn't look like anything yet, and it looks like a big hot mess. And I'm sorry, we do have a little bit of a reflective issue here. I'll worry about the sides of my canvas later. into the interior parts of these the tree I'm leaving the orangey color but I just I really want to put the light light windows in here and there's going to be tree branches and I've got to figure out how, how I'm doing this yet I'm, I'm just kind of playing with it and I keep hoping that all of a sudden it just makes sense to me <laughs> since it's really hurting that I'm not really got a good reference here folks I'm just kind of playing around with ideas and sometimes that shows some other colors because I don't want it to be so and I can't do everything with this um, this brush I'm going to go in with a smaller one so because I have a lighter value down back here I really need to go with a pretty intense value so I am um, taking that really the second cool green that we had up at the top a little bit of ivory black and going to go in pretty intense right on top of this so you can see with the with the difference in the value it does create that um, but you can tell that this branch is it is in the is in the foreground and go up over towards this tree or towards our little house because I really don't like the little house that much I'm just kind of like I'm gonna cover it over a little part part of it. Um, I just kind of did that because it seemed like it needed something like that, but uh, I'm just going to cover up the whole, <laughs> the whole house a little bit. Um, there's going to be branches, right? I've got to get some branches in here. So I'm loosening it up. I'm, I'm putting a little bit of greens on top of these. I'm using that warm brownish green that I made. And here's where you get to put in a little bit more. Um, I'm not really doing details. I'm just suggesting that we've got this other stuff going on here. I do need this kind of darker value. probably needs to be another tree over here, but I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Because I've got it. I'm just kind of doing that. So if this is a branch, I probably should bring this out a little bit more. So once I put some color down, I'm just kind of softening it up into this area. And I could use a smaller brush, but again, I'm not, 
I, you know, I, I'm fighting myself is what I'm doing, folks. I am fighting myself because I know that I want to put details in, but I don't even know what I'm doing. So it's, um, and what this is supposed to demonstrate is how, it's about the palette, really. But I now have made it into this painting, and um, it's tough when you don't really know which direction you're going, necessarily. Put a little bit more up here. It's just it's kind of hanging down a little bit. So I want to go inside with this little bit of green inside. I could tell you that my, um, I'm going to get a smaller, a smaller brush. It's a sable, and I'm going to go, I'm going to use this little one, Rosemary Red Dot. It's, uh, and I think because now I'm, I'm wanting things to, um, pull, um, I want the, I want it to be softer out there. I'm going to, I need some little windows is what I need. Light yellow. Do I even have it anymore? I think I do. I'm gonna go with clean brush. I'm actually gonna use another another little brush. Um, that that titanium white yellow mixture. There's a little bit of yellow in there. I'm gonna hit this. I'm just gonna make these little holes um, because they they need to be in there. So, you know, remember I originally had this, the whole canvas was just, I just painted it with a gray acrylic. And I didn't want any gray holes in here. And I may put some more holes in here, but right now that's what I got. It's just I'm missing something in here. I just, I'm gonna put a, what did I do for this color? I'm gonna go put this. Kind of bluish gray. I'm gonna suggest there's a tree back there. Because again, I'm all about contrast. Want it to be contrasty. So if I have a light color going in, the tree, and I'm going to put a little bit of this color in here. All right, so we're going to suggest that that's. You see how I say just suggest? Because I don't even know what I'm doing. He's like, why am I here? Why am I even watching your video, Sue? It's always fun to see where Sue's going to go when she has no idea what she's doing. And, and again, I just wanted to show you. It was more about the palette, but now it's turned into this a painting, and I'm just... Whatever that's going to be. I'm not sure. I've got to work that out. Um, so we're going to go back in there with that. Um,
And I guess part of it is I have to figure out where, and I'll put more light holes in it later, but I gotta get, I've got to get some uh, um, tree trunks in here. And I'm gonna use my, um, I'm going to use my uh, um, paint scraper. some of these light, oopsie, picking this up. This little brush has one wild hair in it. And I need to mess this up a little bit. And I might have to actually hit it later. Guys, a little tiny bit. Get a little bit more dry time on some of this part. I'll get it there later. But I'm gonna suggest that there's some trunks in here. Um, Drop the trunk there, and maybe one like right here. Get a little fatter at the base of it. And there might be a little branch here. Um, suggest that there's trunks. And I may open this up a little bit. This may be a little closed. Let's see. What if I squirt that out? Let's just scrape a whole big white in there because we're gonna lighten this up. It's a little too much. See how wonderful these little scrapers are? These are the best little tools ever. Kind of suggesting that. Now, if I'm going to make a brown, like if I'm going to do a tree trunk, I got to make a neat brown. So I'm going to start with my cad red and a little bit of my green. A little bit more green. And I want to cool that, that tree down. I'm just I'm going to put some gray in that. So that's a pretty good tree trunk color for what we're, you know, I'm gonna remember the violet I made up the top. Put a little bit of violet in it. It's a little bit cobalty, but I'm just gonna kind of drop the drop a trunk. I'm trying to use the side of this, and I'm not being very successful, but. It sort of suggests that there's some tree trunks here. Now, now you go in and you capitalize on the darker colors. I'm going back in. kind of hitting some areas that I want to emphasize as dark because I have this tree in here.
kind of moving around. I'm just trying to see where I can, you know, pull this out. And I don't know if I like my tree shape yet, and I'm just kind of, um, you know, I got a little carried away with my trunks here, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna gnarly that branch up a little bit. And I can work with that later. I'm just, I wanna get my overall picture kind of in. So I wanna go back in and put, I don't want to keep a brush clean. So at least I had grabbed this one to put in the little windows. And I want to put a couple more windows into my, because I made a whole big spot for some. So <laughs> I want to go ahead and put some more. It's a little too yellow, but. And uh, Um, there are some little windows and stuff in here. We're going down here with this uh, light um, dead grass color. And uh, we'll be able to work that in here. Okay, I want to stop. I want to put, uh, at least get, I want my basic shapes in. And so, remember that nice, uh, burnt sienna color we kind of made. I'm actually going to go with my tree trunk color <laughs> that I had made and I'm going to suggest that this is um, the base of this here. I'm going to even kind of suggest it kind of goes down. I'm using a little bit of the ivory black. This is up on a bank. No, that doesn't look, make like any sense yet, but and I'm putting some more of a lighter color on top. Other color on top here, a little bit darker. It's still not darker. Mm -hmm. some titanium white. that I'll be able to work that in later I've got to figure out how to make a nice solid brown and some green I think green and red makes a good brown but I'm not feeling it That I want the contrast between these these hills. And uh, you know it's like just dry grass, right? So mix some of that in there. I'm gonna just make it like there's a little fence row here. That's another reason that these little flat flats are good for. I 
go. So it's telling us what time it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fool with this a little bit more, I know. I'm not digging it. I've just not quite got it there yet. We'll get it. Alright, I wanna I wanna try to make a little area over here. Kind of go towards this road. Um again, I wanna use the browns. I'm just going to kind of loosen it up here. I'm just going to suggest it's pretty loose. These golds. I need a little bit of gold. Oops, that's too left. Yellow. I need it to be gold. Yeah, I like that. bit of a dead grass. I need more green in this, I think. Yeah, that looks good. I'll fix, I'll figure out else, what else I need to do here. I want to, I want to suggest the road. So let me get one more. Let's see. Let's go in with this brush here. I'm gonna go in. Remember, I was making the the the, the road color, and I wanted to go with since I had so much yellows in here. I wanted to make it look a little bit purpley, but I, I wasn't really successful at making it as purpley as I wanted it to be. Is what it needs. Adding some more white to it. That's probably better. Now that I got it in, I'm going to work the color. So if I got this light value here, I probably need to darken this value, but let's go ahead and do the darker color. Cobalt blue with just a little bit of the violet. It kind of makes almost like a, a, um, a um, ultramarine. Might be, I have a dip a little bit dark. Pretend like the, shoot, the trees are creating a shadow. This is a shadow on the road. Make it darker in here. Yeah, like, like lines in the road. It would be um. Like, the, like shadows. So now we're going to go in with a lighter color. And just right here, we're going to make that. I'll just stop in here for a little bit. Zoom later. I just want to make sure I had enough paint on every surface here before I cut.
white paint. I probably will sign it right there in the road. Or I could sign it right here. I don't really don't like that spot. <laughs> I probably, I feel like I need to have a, um, I know this is a really basic piece. I mean, I haven't really, um, it's very, I don't know what else to say. It's very no detail. This is not all. Not all pieces have to have detail. Um, I put a couple little light spots, like almost like dappled light coming through. It's kind of the same concept of the little the little holes that you have in the. And since it is a road, you know, I want to put the little yellow lines. So. I say that this is, is it like it's coming around a curve. Okay, that was my mistake. But Dapple hits it like light, might be lighter in some of these areas. So I like to play um, purples <laughs> and yellows off of each other, even if I have to exaggerate a little bit. This is fun. Put back there. Okay. Let's put this darker. Remember, since I didn't like the values being too close to each other, I'm going to put a little bit more greens into my uh, grass because it looks, you know, I know I wanted to, that's what I'm seeing around here. It's so, things are getting so burned up because it's so dry. We need, we need rain desperately. And um, it's not the right kind. I'm going to put a little orange in it. Bit different. And just put a little bit, even a little bit more, just some. Just like a, like a, makes me think of when I go to my friend Ann's house uh, in Rome Mountain. We've painted together out there before. A lot of the, a lot of the girls go out and have fun at Ann's. So this is very similar to something you might see out there. I ought to put like a hay roll. I don't want to get too busy. I can probably get too much stuff. I probably shouldn't have put the little house in, although it looks kind of, that's cute. I'll put a little, little lighter hill up here. Suggesting a little bit of a, you know, 
I'll probably look at this again. But you know what, before I get, I'm gonna put, see, I'll never know when to stop. That's the thing. I'll just keep, I'll just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. I'm just gonna suggest there's some fences over here. Holes. I'm using just the cad red and ivory black. grass or something. I don't like that. I want that to be darker. So I'm going to actually take yellow and well, yellow and black. A little bit of, a little bit of the orange in there. Because if it's under sh it's shadow, it wouldn't be really light. fairly now I'm starting to feel pretty good about this little piece I uh, may put some highlights on these little may put another one over here just a little bit yeah. I'll probably put a little bit of greens in this part of the grass but I have to worry about my contrast between these two values so I want this to be, definitely be darker got paint down and you just darken it up this way. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I need it to be a little bit wispy or grassy. That's not the way to do it. Clean my brush. these like just like rectangles I'm just gonna just mess up the edges a little bit with a little bit of the orange because that would be kind of the light that would show through the trees. Alright, I think I'll stop because I'm getting tired. So what I'm gonna do before I leave, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this piece because it's nice and wet. And I could sign it here, but I think I'm going to sign it here because I can do it all at once. No, maybe I can't. Maybe I'm wrong. This will work. Yeah. Just put that in there. And 
the maker's mark. Okay, we need to have some lighter values in here and we wanna kinda of create some of the volume of the tree. So we're gonna go, we've got all these dark values in here and I wanna add, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in here. Again, we're just using a little cobalt. I gotta have enough of it mixed and grab a little bit more of that. go in here and just start to almost form mounds and I'm just using this brush and it's it happens to be a number four eclipse long filber and I just need to kind of suggest that these are for lack of a better word form um, and I want to put some lighter values on that and let's see we've got these greens over here and they have some yellows in them, and I do want them to be lighter, but I want them kind of muted a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab some of that violet that I had up here. And see how that just browns it down beautifully. So by mixing your palette ahead of time, and you know you've got your sources, meaning we have our primary colors that, that we were using, the cobalt blue, the yellow, cad yellow, and the cad red. I have the ivory black down here and the, and the um, titanium white. And then I was able to make a violet, basically. And so you can just, if you understand basic color theory, you can use that as your way of um, creating your form. Now, if you understand that um, the, uh, you'll knock down, you can actually, okay, what am I trying to say? you can um, bring down a color using its complement. So I'm gonna put a lighter value here. So I've got this two-tone, and I'm, I'm sorry, there is a reflective. Let's see if I, I don't think I can, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Let's see if I put the light. I'm gonna put a lighter. holes that I've created, the little windows. Let's just bring some of this down here. We can have some little... I'm not really wanting to do little leaves, but I guess I'm good with that. looking around and I'll keep looking and see if there's anything else I need to do so if I was just to tear this painting apart what I'm gonna do hang on for a second I'm gonna do it a little differently so perhaps I won't have such bad reflection testing testing one two all right so if we were to dissect this piece so to speak and you look and you can see that our back value is a lot lighter because we added a little bit, we kept it cooler and we kept the values pretty close here between sky and this mountain. Um, I got a little heavy initially when I first started this as far as this tree mass here, but I've um, actually added gray, if you'll remember, and we were able to bring that down just a little bit to be able to recess or push it back into the piece. And we've got our tree masses and you can say we start getting a little warmer in our colors. Uh, we've got our little building, we've got our, you know, all of the compositions here. We've got our little street and our road, and it, you know what? It all came together. Um, so, you know, this was a really fun exercise. It's, it's just mixing your palette, with making sure you have a very limited palette, and just uh, creating your paintings um, with just those primary colors. 
you you can do this. Uh, you saw the color mixing, and if you're looking at this palette now, <laughs> it's a big hot mess, but here's our cobalt, here's our cad yellow, our cad red. We had titanium white and ivory black, and we were able to mix an array of greens just using those colors. We were able to mix a, an array of yellows just using these colors here. And by taking the cobalt and the cad red, we were able to make a violet. So. I needed the violet to be able to um, tone down my yellows when I need my yellows. You know, the fun little shadows and stuff that you see on the street, all of it. It all came together and I'm really pleased with the result. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, give me a thumbs up and be consider becoming a subscriber if you aren't already. And if you really, really enjoyed this, you can give me one of those little wonderful little super thanks. You see that little heart there with a the dollar sign? Go ahead and hit that and you've got some options and you can also become a member. So check that out. Ta-da! See, there it is. And it really wasn't that hard. You saw step-by-step step how I mixed all the colors. So I had my array of greens that I just used, basically the cobalt blue and the yellow. And, but if I needed it to be a little bit warmer or if I needed it to be cooler, lighter in value, darker in value, I adjusted. So. That is a really wonderful way to to do your greens. It's just keep it keep it super simple and, and work it out that way. And of course we made all the other colors that we had to make as well. And it was really fun. I like doing exercises like this every now and then. And exercises like this keep us sharp, remind us of a lot of the basics that we need to do to do a good painting. So yeah. Thanks for joining me. And if you liked today's video and you got some value from it, give it a thumbs up. And if you really, really got a lot of value at it, you can give it a super thanks. And a super thanks, see that little heart down there? There's like a little heart. That little heart has a little dollar sign. So you can hit it and you can see, it'll give you an option, so don't worry. You can decide, eh, I don't wanna do that. Or you can see the options and say, oh, that's easy. Let me hit this one or I can hit that one. See, it's, it's really fun. And uh, you can also become a member. And that's another fun way to help support me in my endeavors here and creating more YouTube videos. And because I'm able to do this, it's, I can tell you there's gonna be some more equipment coming on board so I can do this even better. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna be doing a lot more fun stuff. And uh, yeah, so I just, I'm so glad that you're here and uh, I hope that we can have some more adventures here in the painting world. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, until next time, I will see you later. Bye.